In a few days time, I'm going to be in Switzerland commentating at the Beal Chess Festival. It's a wonderful event, beautiful location. Hundreds of players are there, a wonderful atmosphere in the tournament. And at the very top of the tournament, there is a Grandmaster event. And this year, it's gonna be very special indeed. It's really strong. The world champion Magnus Carlsen is going to be playing. So what I'd like to do is just give you a quick preview of the Grandmaster tournament. Let me introduce the players. So starting with Nico Georgiadis, who's a Swiss Grandmaster, he's only 22 years old, and he had a superb tournament last year in Biel. Let me just show you a quick excerpt from one of his games. This was played earlier in the year in the Swiss Team Championship. Now he was white, you can see he's on the attack. Beautifully centralized queen and rook looking at the h7 pawn at the moment well protected by queen and rook. Now, of course, he would like to play bishop f5 to put more pressure on the h-pawn. But in this case, the knight comes into c5, attacking queen and rook, and actually black survives. But you can see there are so many pieces and, and points under fire in this position that it's no surprise that actually White is able to overload Black's position. You can see this bishop pointing here, the rook pointing here. And this is an absolutely wonderful move. B4, it's very visual. So this pawn can be captured in three different ways, but they're all losing. So for example, rook takes B4, would lose to bishop takes D6. Obviously queen takes, then queen takes pawn mate. Pawn takes pawn loses very easily to rook takes knight and knight takes pawn now this is the subtle one then we can play bishop f5 and the knight can no longer jump into c5 and basically white is going to crash through here there is no decent defense because if rook f7 then we've got queen e8 followed by rook h7 mate. So b4 basically just overloads black's position. It's the straw that breaks the camel's back. And now white has lots of different threats. Rook takes pawn, b c5 using that pin uh, for example. Uh, and even bishop f5 is a threat now. In the game black played g4 but this could safely be ignored. The queen moved and now rook takes pawn. So this is now coming. Knight c5, this was taken. So an exchange sacrifice. Well, not really a sacrifice because look at those wonderful bishops. Bishop takes rook threatened. Bishop e5, we're still gunning for the king. And here, black is helpless after this move. Black resigned. It would have been nice to see the final couple of moves. If rook g7, then white can win with a nice little sacrifice and queen h5 mate. So Nico Georgiadis, a very dangerous player, but he's not going to have it easy. Now, next player on the list, David Navarra from the Czech Republic, and he's such an exciting player. Sometimes he gets lost in flights of fancy as he calculates variations to an extraordinary depth. He too has a real instinct for attack. And here, well, this was a beautiful strategic game actually, and also shows how he likes to attack too. So first of all, he has white. He uses space advantage to play b4. Now he wants to open things up and get through to the weak pawn on d6. Black bolstered the c5 point with the knight, but now that knight has moved away from the king's side, then he turns his attention to that sector with knight h4. So I, I like the way white is shifting back and forth here. This is really nice. g6 threatened, the knight comes back to defend, and now 
seeing that black's major pieces are on the other side of the board he simply crashes through this is wonderful now i'm sure he calculated a few variations and saw that they were winning but basically this is just winning for white by sheer weight of numbers the knight is on a beautiful position attacking d6 but also looking at the king side as well and uh, obviously threatening a, a huge fork so queen c7 and now navarra just shifts his pieces over to the king side very very simply um basically just black doesn't have a decent defense so that rook is about to come in here and now he needs the queen in the attack no great tactics he just shifts it over and black has absolutely no defense the queen coming in and now it's basically forced mate rook e7 that's taken a check and now we just need to check here and here black resigned because if king f7 then queen check and well let's go to the very end queen takes bishop mate beautiful just very logical so david navarra a dangerous man next on the list we have peter svidler who is now eight time russian champion every time i introduce peter i have to add another russian championship um of course he's been successful in so many events but somehow eight time russian champion for me is an extraordinary record um you know if you any player that's won the russian championship or the soviet championship just once to my mind belongs in the pantheon and peter has won it on eight occasions and this game also shows his flair for attack he's a dangerous player generally plays very quickly um you know he's very confident about his his ideas knight g5 this is actually a blitz game played uh, in the tile memorial blitz tournament just a little bit earlier in the year in moscow um so the rook has just been driven away by the bishop and now the knight comes in to attack the sensitive square f7 very logical and here he just takes on f7 and remember this is a blitz game so there's some impressive calculation going on here bishop check now if the king steps back there is a very simple winning move here and that's queen b3 threatening bishop f7 mate and there is just no decent defense here for example um discover check here and well if the king comes there then there are all kinds of nasty moves happening and of course if the king goes back to c8 well you can take on d8 and the next rook comes over and so on it's um, disastrous so after this check e6 played and now well i dare say that rook e1 is possible but well strike while the iron is hot this is beautiful move it just drags the king out into the middle and the king is completely exposed and absolutely crushing attack no proper defense of course if the king steps up then bishop f4 so fedosev puts the bishop in the way but this just gets taken and well, the pawn threats threatens to push on and queen check it's it's completely finished and basically this is a case of pin and win we're just going to take this this is also threatened black has has absolutely no defense here that knight is going to drop very soon uh, what i like about this is there's no drama about it you know he's just building up very steadily well, these pieces are completely out of play and Svidler just brings all his pieces into the attack very steady and after that black resigned um, well the king is about to be mated this is dropping very very swift and brutal attack from peter Svidler. nice stuff okay next on the list we have Maxim, whoops, not this one, not this one. Wrong game. We have Maxime Vachelegrave. 
well, he had a superb year in 2017, but just missed out on a spot for the candidates. So he's having to find his feet again. But of course, we know what a class act he is. Uh, this game was played in the Bundesliga, German Bundesliga, in February. And, well, it's against a, a 25-50 player. Not such a bad player, but just look how Maxime takes him apart so easily. So this is from a Spanish. And you can see that Black is building up, or try, attempting to build up some play on the queen side. But watch how Maxime deals with this. Well, he wants to play d5, but watch out. The rook in the corner is on. So first of all, he exchanges off bishops. Very logical. We want to weaken the king anyway. And that means that this move is a threat after the exchange of bishops. So now he took. And this is great. Next stage, okay, let's just undermine these pawns. So a4, very nice. And black also has problems on the C file. So black took this and now white just has a beautiful center. So black hurries to close this diagonal, but then C5. And this is just a really simple play by white. So there are problems on the C file for black. So the, the queen has to move aside. But you can see that this center is absolutely huge and mobile and white's pieces are just so beautifully coordinated as well. And that E5 basically just rips open black's king. It's really simple. Now the queen comes down, gives a check but it's not really helping. E6 is threatened with a discovered check. So black tries to exchange queens, but now Vachet Le Grave takes two minor pieces of the rook, but black's king is still horribly exposed. And this was winning really simply. Let's just go to the very end and queen c1 check and here black resigned so if g5 then you can play h4 and that's not a nice position for the black king so it's really nice that everything started with this move bishop h6 and after that black was just rolled away beautiful attacking chess very logical from maxime vachy le Grave. right next game we have Shakria Mamadiarov. So he's currently number three in the world. He's rated 2801 on the live list. So he's made great strides in the last couple of years. And he's a very dangerous player. Uh, well, with both colors, but with white, he often plays D4 and plays some pretty sharp systems. So here, for example, this was played against David Navarra in the Gashimov Memorial uh, just earlier this year. Mamadiarov played h4 in this position against uh, Navarra's Grunfeld. And his brutality paid off. I'm going to leap ahead 20 odd moves. And in this position, well, he's got a nice rook on d7. And in combination with this rook, on the semi-open h-file, his strategy came good. Rook takes pawn, because if king takes, then we can give a check and pick up the rook. So, well, he won a pawn, and that was good enough to win the game. So he's a dangerous man, Shakriya Mamadiarov. It's interesting to see how he gets on, um, particularly against the world champion Magnus Carlsen. Now this is quite a coup for the Beale Chess Festival that Magnus Carlsen is playing. He's always been a fan of the tournament. He's played um, there in previous years, but not not recently, not for, not for maybe the past six years, I think. Um, but it's great to see him back there and it's gonna be fascinating to see how he gets on in this World Championship year. Let me show you 
a game of his that was played, it's a rapid play game that was played online in the um, Pro League on uh, tournamentsinchess.com. And, well, it's a, it's a classic Carlson position. He's got his bishop on a nice square blockading that isolated deep one and, and the knight looks at the pawn as well. But so far, black is holding everything pretty well. Bishop pair, which well, on a good day might come good. But watch how Carlson just takes apart black's position within a few moves. First of all, f4. Okay, what's the big idea with this one? Well, maybe he wants to stop bishop e5 in some positions, but he's basically planning an advance on the king side. So f5 check. And now rook g1. So this is all about attacking that pawn on g7. It's such a simple strategy. And in fact, black struggles to do anything about it. h4 played. That's basically to block this pawn so that after g4, the, the black pawn can't advance. And of course, that pawn wouldn't be on prees as well. Black should probably play rook h8 here and defend that g pawn with rook h7. It's not beautiful, but it's probably best. Instead, he played rook e8. And here, white just breaks through. And after this, so simple, h6, the rook comes to g6, and these pawns are just dropping off. And then, once white gets a check here, then d5 will fall as well. And white is just completely winning this position. And here, black blundered a rook. But if we just go back, you can see that white is completely winning this position. d5 is on prees, the f pawn is rolling. Fantastic how Carlson just rolls black over in the space of a couple of moves. So, Beale Chess Festival starts this coming weekend. First game of the Grandmaster Tournament is on Sunday the 22nd. And as I said, it's a double round, all play, all tournament. So 10 rounds over, well, 11 days. I'm really looking forward to going there. I'll be commentating live with Anna Rudolph. And you can check out our commentary on the Beale Chess Festival site. Do join us.